Well, some years ago, I was, uh, I was a pastor and the principal of a Christian school, and, and I uh, had the privilege of being around the students every day, and I just loved being there. There were two sisters there, and they were good little girls. They were, I think, uh, like 13 and 15 years old, and the younger one was a nice, uh, pretty girl, and she was usually happy. But one day she came to school, and she was really gloomy. You could tell she was not smiling. She was uh, just having a really bad day. And so finally I went over to her, and I put my arm around her, and I said, uh, how are you? God's good. And, and, and uh, she said, uh, leave me alone. I'm trying to have a bad day. <laughs> and you know, sometimes we do have bad days. There's sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I'm, I'm gloomy. Uh, it seems like there isn't any reason to get out of bed. And, and uh, some, we can just get our thoughts in the wrong place, and we don't really feel good, and we forget all of God's goodness, and, uh, and when I was a little boy, and I'd get up like that, I'd go out in the kitchen there, and my mother would look at me, and she'd say, I think you got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning, <laughs> and you know, sometimes we just do, but aren't you glad that we have a greater destiny than that. I, I got up this morning and I was, I just wasn't as happy as I should be. I know that. I was kind of gloomy and all of a sudden the Lord just came upon me and, and uh, I'm so thankful that when we walk with the Lord, uh, we have a comforter, the Holy Spirit. And I've learned now as old as I am, I just call out and say, comforter, Holy Spirit, I need you to encourage me. And you know, when we get out of bed in the morning, isn't it good to know when we call upon the name of the Lord? That we call upon the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort? Wow. The one who has promised us his steadfast love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. So when I wake up in the morning, and you wake up in the morning, we, can, we know one thing will happen today in our lives. The steadfast love of the Lord will be there in my day. The steadfast love of the Lord will be there in our day. His mercies never come to an end. God will show us new mercy this very day. Because he's a loving and a kind God. It's in God's nature to love and to bless us. He sent Jesus Christ into this world because he loves us. He loves us more than his own son. What a wonderful God that we face grace and we face mercy and we face goodness from our God morning by morning as new mercies we see. Oh, but then sometimes we get to thinking about who we are. You know, I love people that had it going for them when they were growing up and they had wonderful lives, but some of us weren't that good. I think I was just wandering around wondering what life was all about until I was, I don't know, older than I should have been. I'd done so well in life that when I was 30 years old, I, I tried to go get a job down at Walmart. Everybody could get a job at Walmart. But you know, they told me I didn't have enough job experience and I didn't have enough education. They wouldn't hire me. <laughs> oh yeah. But you know what? I think the greatest day of our life is when we realize how bad we really are. I'm a failure. <laughs> oh, thank God I'm a failure. I never could do anything right. It was the greatest day of my life when I knelt down and confessed I had a need for this wonderful living God. I'm never going to amount to anything. Because every time I try, I fail. But it's when we can come to the end of ourselves, we humble ourselves, 
We confess not only our worthlessness, but we confess our great, great need for the grace and mercy and love of God himself. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God who said that if our footsteps pleased him, he would cause our enemies to lie down around us. And no good thing would he withhold from those that delight in his word. Oh, what a wonderful God. I remember that day when I was standing in my living room and I was trying to do a business deal and the bank had told me they were taking everything away from me and it wasn't going to work and, and I had failed. And I remember that day just being there and hopeless and, and negative and gloomy. And I remember when I opened my Bible and it came to a verse in the Bible that, uh, that I just, it powerfully, powerfully impacted me and changed my life. Because standing there alone, I wasn't anything. And I was a failure. And it was going to happen again. But when I put God in my life, when I opened that old Bible up, I read when it turned to Isaiah 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. <laughs> oh, I have a God today. We have a living God, a merciful God, a kind God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I'm going to help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all those that were angry or incensed against you, they will be ashamed and confounded or confused. They will be as nothing. And those that strive with you, they will perish. Oh, you'll seek them. You won't find them. Even those that contended with you, those that warred against you, shall be as nothing, and as a thing of nothing. For I, the Lord thy God, shall hold your right hand, saying unto you, Don't be afraid, I will help you. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and you men of Israel, I will help you, saith the Lord, our Redeemer. Oh, fear not, thou worm, Jim O'Connor. Your God's a living God, and he will help you. Fear not, as you listen to me, fear not. God knows your every weakness. He knows your every secret. He knows everything bad you've ever done. But when he looks at those things, he cannot see them, for he sees an ocean of the blood of the cross of Christ. He sees you wrapped in his righteousness. Oh, the glory of God himself has been placed upon you as you receive Jesus Christ. He's the almighty, everlasting, living God. His steadfast love never ceases. Oh, our God, so wonderful, so amazing so steadfast. God is on his way towards you today with his love and mercy that never ceases, that's new every day. Oh, don't worry. God has something coming towards you today and it's going to deliver you. Don't be discouraged. God's not discouraging you. Oh, you're so special to the mind and heart of God. Oh, how God loves me and you. Oh, God loves you so much. You know, I look back now that I'm older, and there were things in my life that I thought would destroy me that were so bad. Things that I had caused, some of them myself, and some had been caused to me. But looking back after many years, I see the doors that opened after those bad things were so much greater, so 
much bigger than anything that would have ever been in my life if I had not suffered those dark days. But you see, God never gives up on you and me. He never quits. He always has another plan. There's always another place for you. It doesn't matter how the prison cell is that you're in today. It doesn't matter how broken your heart is, how there's no relationships left. It doesn't matter if you don't have a job. Because God is a God of the new day and the new beginning every day when we get out of bed. God said to Jeremiah, at what moment, at what point in time, might I speak and finish a nation? At what time might I speak and a new nation begin? Oh, there are new things ahead of you in your life. No matter what your circumstances are, I'll promise you this, they're changing. And those of us that seek the Lord and walk with his hand upon our lives, that changes for the good. There's a bigger hour, a greater day in front of you than anything you've ever seen behind you. God said to the children of Israel, can a woman forget her suckling child? Can she forget about the baby she's born? And God says, maybe, but I can never forget about you. Oh, how wonderful our God is. It tells us in Psalms 139 that we cannot count the thoughts that God has sought towards you and me. Sure, God is all-powerful. God is everywhere present. But God is everything focusing on you and me totally. His hand will never leave you. His eyes will never dim his heart will never grow cold towards you and I. His love pours out merciful every day. Oh, it tells us in Romans chapter 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Oh, Lord didn't overpromise and underperform. I've had some friends like that. They're always saying they're going to do big things. Always telling me all the good that was going to happen. But you know, time after time, they talk big. But there wasn't anything there. But oh, don't you thank yourself? Don't you thank our God? Oh, how happy I am within myself that my God has never spoken anything that he isn't more than able to do and willing to do for you and me. Today the sovereignty of God is resting upon your life. The circumstances around you are beneath his hand, in his control, changing at the sound of his voice. Nothing's impossible when we walk with our God. Oh, don't worry about what's going on around you. Just lift up your heart, lift up your voice, lift up your praise. Let God come into your life again this morning. Things are going to be better. Oh, God heals your sorrows. God lifts your weary feet. Don't be so down on yourself. Like I say, it was a great day in my life where I realized that everything I ever tried to do, I was going to fail at. Unless God took my hand. And so today, let's make sure that we kneel before our God. Ask him for his forgiveness. Pray, oh God, lead my life. Don't let me go my own way anymore, oh Lord. Because when I go my own way, it ends in heartbreak and in sorrow. So let me go in your way, oh Lord. Let me remain steadfast in your commandments in your church and in your will. Because there I know the living waters of life and the blessings of life flow down upon you and me. And it's a wonderful place to be. It's where God takes and says to us, call unto me and I'll show you those things, those great and mighty things you know not of. 
Oh, how deep, how wide, how high, how far is this wonderful, wonderful love of God. You know, somebody watching me right now, you're down on yourself. You've been noticing all the things you've done wrong. You criticize yourself. You put yourself down because of your education, because of some relationships, some decisions you've made, some failures, some problems you've had. But oh, ask God to forgive you for that. And let the Holy Spirit show you those things are under the blood. There's nothing stopping the great and mighty hand of God from lifting you to greater things than you could have ever known had you not gone through those valleys of sorrows. Many of us remember Potiphar. He was a man that took Joseph in. And he made Joseph the master of everything in his home. And Joseph was an honest man doing what was right. But then Potiphar's wife, she falsely accused him. He was thrown into prison. These terrible things happened to him. But you know what? He was on his way to a far, far greater place of honor and authority than he would have ever known. Had those bad things not happened, he would have stayed there in that small place. And sure, You've had some things happen that have put you down, that have set you back. You've been overwhelmed sometimes by the issues of life, and you say, oh Lord, how can this be like this? But God wants you to know you're on your way to a new promotion. You know, I found something to be true in my life. God said, speak unto that mountain, and it shall move. And I know one thing today. Whatever that mountain is that you're facing, whatever mountain I'm facing, all I have to do is say, well, I'm not going to move. I'm just not going to move. I'm going to preach to myself. I'm going to proclaim, profess. I will proclaim that my God is almighty, everlasting, all-powerful God. And mountain, I speak to that mountain. Be thou removed. And that mountain will move not because of the power and might of this man, not because there's something special in me, not by that might, not by that mountain power of flesh, but it's by the Spirit of the living God that's dwelling inside of me. It's that Spirit of the living God dwelling inside of you. And if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is resting in you this morning, he too will raise you up out of your grave clothes. He will set you on high in your own place and station in life. Oh, let's be encouraged today. When we start getting discouraged and wanting to have a bad day, let's command ourselves and say, I'm not going there ever again. I'm staying in the faith. I'm staying in my testimony. I'm standing before this mountain and I'm beginning to move. Today is a day for God's people to be strong, steadfast, casting down those gloomy thoughts and those depressing things. And I know this because I know my God. If you rebuke those thoughts of failure and discouragement, if you stand up and reach out and reach up, the living God will meet you again. The living God bringing us through to victory again. This is a day of victory in the house of the Lord. Oh, God is so great. God is so good. Things that we cannot imagine right now are underneath the hand of God. And He's moving people. He's moving money. He's moving situations. Because He will not allow you to die you experience the goodness as a son of Abraham through Jesus Christ we know as we wait on him 
we shall taste and see that our living God is so wonderful, so merciful, so precious. Oh, just believe in the Lord.